All right, so here we are in front of a 33, 35, 76 foot wide machine. Um, it's equipped with PLX openers and mid row banders on the front. A uh, few features that we can see are different from this view are the new uh, rear arms. Um, they're kind of a dog leg style as compared to the previous angled down version, uh, as well as there are larger 13.5 tires uh, all the way across the rear except the mainframe. Now standard across all 3330 and 3335 models, uh, we have both our opener hydraulic hoses and our mid-row bander or mid-row shank hydraulic hoses are now a double braid high abrasion resistant cover. Uh, these should stand up much better to UV wear as well as abrasive wear. So up front we can see that we're on a high float model. Uh, we have new hydraulic cylinders on the front. These cylinders are now a welded version uh, and they are the same size as we had on the 3320. The same two and a half inches of stroke and three inch bore. Uh, we also still have the depth adjustment shims as 3320 QDA owners would be used to. Uh, they can be used on AccuSet uh, for verification purposes. Uh, you can check that your software readout and your shim, number of shims in the cylinder match. Uh, during normal AccuSet operation, you will not be using depth adjustment shims. All right, here we are in a high float mainframe front. Um, we have new cylinders here as well. These cylinders are much larger. They're a four and a half inch bore. The front still has the same two and a half inches of stroke, while the back has the four and a half inches of stroke needed for the PLX adjustment. Uh, we also still have depth adjustment shims up here. The reason why we needed the larger four and a half inch cylinder is so that the weight of the unit when it's folded up in transport, all the weight can ride just on the cylinder. Uh, the 3320 QDA, you used to have to put the shims in so that the weight of the unit was riding just on the shims, whereas now that does not matter. Uh, all of the weight of the unit can ride just on the oil in the cylinder. All Accuset cylinders have an internal position sensor in them. That is giving live feedback to the system controlling the seating depth. Uh, as the cylinder moves in or out, the sensor is able to sense that uh, to very high accuracies uh, to enable the whole drill to move as one. Also, all cylinders are now dual acting, so we can both push and pull the cylinder. On the rear of the unit, the cylinders are also new. They're a larger four and a half inch diameter cylinder, and they have the four and a half inch stroke needed to adjust the PLX opener depth. Uh, they, they're the same size of cylinder as the front, but just have the longer stroke. Uh, also, we have the 16.5 tires on the rear for high float options, um, as was done on the 3320. Okay, this half inch. Okay, we are looking at an AccuSet hydraulic manifold. Uh, there are six of these manifolds dispersed across the frame. Each manifold controls one axle, so it controls two cylinders. This one here is controlling the front and rear cylinder on the outer wing. Uh, there are two solenoids in each one. Uh, each solenoid controls one, one wheel arm, either the front or the rear. Okay, this is uh, for Curtis. This is something we've been doing since about September of last year. It will be on all 3330 and 3335 machines. Um, on our opener circuit, we've added test ports. Uh, these are to remove air from the opener circuit. We also have them on the mid-row banders or mid-row shanks. Um, if you're having issues achieving packing pressure or consistent depth, it may be due to having air in your opener circuit. And if you suspect that is the case, you can attach a hose. Uh, it just loops from one port to the other. Uh, that allows oil to continuously bypass the end of the cylinder circuit and return to, back to the tractor. So any air entrained in the opener circuit uh, will then pass through all the way back to your tractor tank and hopefully alleviate your air issues that you're having.
Uh, right now, I'm going to put it in transport low. This is the configuration where all cylinders will become fully retracted. Uh, we have orifices in there to control the speed of things better. That allows us to have better accuracy. However, it does result in things moving slowly. Also, our tractor is idling, which may be half the problem. So how long would a person expect the AccuSet to react if you're out in the field and you wanted to, let's say, adjust it by a quarter inch? Should be, I don't know, seconds. Our whole, our whole frame going all the way down to all the way up is about 30 seconds, and I mean, really so here I'm putting it transport high all of the cylinders are extending all the way uh, hopefully in this shot you'll be able to see on the front we have a two and a half inch stroke whereas the back is a four inch stroke so we're actually higher on the back of our unit as compared to the front like we're wedged down kind of thing um, I'm going to take it out of transport high. It's going to go back to an operational level. So on a PLX machine, uh, to make the depth go deeper, we actually raise the back of the unit uh, to, make, to make it kind of wedge down like that, like the front is lower than the back. Uh, that is because the PLX is a frame independent opener. So in order to change the depth, we need to rotate the mount of the opener. So it's, it's not very intuitive in how it um, goes through its range of motion. Also though, because we're able to pitch the frame, like say we have whatever, I'm just speaking out of my butt here, I don't actually know angles, but let's say it's a five degree angle gives us our deepest setting. Well. We could have five degrees, but not be out of stroke on either cylinder. So we also have the option to adjust the depth of our MRBs separate from our openers. And contrary, we also have the ability to adjust the depth of our openers separate from our MRBs. Uh, this is for PLX only, because like a, a PLD or PLS, frame needs to stay level at all times so the front and back move simultaneously whereas the back I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move it around a little bit here so here I'm going to a shallower opener um, adjustment so I'm doing it one step at a time you can see my MRBs I'm going to bring my MRBs into the ground so the front is stepping down, the back is also changing, but it's changing like that so that our opener depth is staying consistent. So here I'm going to put the MRBs shallower again, just watch the back also move at the same time. Um, the frame angle not changing at all as we're stepping through this, like it should be the same frame angle throughout. So let's set our MRBs at a moderate depth. Just let the frame figure itself out here. Um, and now I'm going just, just changing just the openers. And there you can see our frame tilting to adjust our PLX depth. So that is, that is bringing the openers out of the ground. But our cylinders are actually retracting, so it's it's opposite to what you'd think. Here's putting the openers deeper again, and the back end of the frame is coming up. So the more frame angle we have, the deeper the openers are going. So one step at a time. Uh, we're shooting for approximately one eighth of an inch depth change. The steps that you'll actually see though, so if, to change the PLX by an eighth of an inch, the back of the frame needs to move by half an inch. 
to adjust the PLX by an eighth of an inch. Uh, this is screenshot number one, which I will take right now. So our MRBs are at zero and our opener is at one. That is meaning that our MRBs are as deep as they'll go and our openers are, well, they were at one instead of zero, but anyway. On this screenshot, you can see yellow arrows on the MRB and opener level. In between those yellow arrows is the acceptable range. Basically, you can put the MRBs up to level one without affecting your opener depth, but if you go to your MRBs at two or three, you will also need to change your opener depth. So the yellow arrows show what adjustment range you have in this position without affecting the other thing. So I'm gonna to go to screenshot number two here. We're gonna put our MRBs. Our MRBs are going to two, but we also need to change our opener depth because that was out of our acceptable range. <clears throat> so this is screenshot number two. MRBs are at two, openers are at two. Uh, openers being at two is the lowest end of that range for where our MRBs are set. So I'm gonna go to screenshot number three. I'm gonna change my AccuSet to fine tune your adjustment. Uh, you can do it in eighth inch steps. So here I am in front of a 33, 35, 86 foot wide model equipped with PLD openers. Um, basically we're taking this video just to show how the frame height moves on a PHD type opener, either a PLD or PLS. The frame stays consistently level and there is no MRB adjustment on a, a PLD or a PLS. It's only a PLX type drill. Screenshot one and I'll just step it up one at a time and I'll maybe just take a screenshot at five and ten. There's up to one. So here's screenshot number two. That's at opener level five. Uh, something to note is just how the frame is staying level as we're stepping up as compared to the PLX. There's opener level 10. Uh, we'll also go to the back or front or whatever and just show on a PLS or PLD the number on the screen is equivalent to the number of shims that should fit into the cylinders take a screenshot of that just to just to show uh, operator can come take the pin out as normal uh, we will count five shims off and we can slide five shims in you can see that plus or minus millimeter is pretty close we're on that upper end of a millimeter but uh, it can give an operator confidence that we are actually within that range that we're setting to so and then for normal operation we'll take them out again it's level to begin with so okay. that's on the app you can have depth presets so at the top it says low normal high and if I press low it'll automatically go to that depth preset so it's stepping down here slowly um, and then low is highlighted in yellow, meaning that I've reached my, my low preset. Uh, if I go to my normal preset, I'm not sure what I have it saved as. Six, it looks like. Those are all operators set? Yeah, so to set those, uh, all, it, all you need to do is I'll set my normal at eight. So I've manually put in eight and then save in the bottom left. Uh, there's the screenshot of it. And then I'll save that as normal. So I select normal and there is normal highlighted yellow meaning that I'm at that preset. So 